Hey, I'm Gary from Piaggio Products in New York Springs, Pennsylvania, and we also have a store in Maryland called All Good Garden Supply in Finksburg, Maryland. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down here. The more people subscribe, the more videos we're going to do. Today we're talking about pH meters. Um, this is definitely something a lot of people ask about in the store. We sell a bunch of different models. Um, pH is very important to plants. Um, on Wikipedia, even Wikipedia, I was looking up what pH actually stands for, and they're saying power of hydrogen, but there's multiple references to what it actually stands for. So well, we're calling it a pH meter. It's a measurement between how acidic and how alkaline your water is or your nutrient solution. So what that does to plants, we're gonna have this little chart over here. The roots of your plants can only absorb, absorb nutrients at certain pH levels. So most people, in, most people try to hit about 6.2 on the pH. And pretty much if your soil gets too low of a pH, you will be cutting off a lot of important things like your calcium and magnesium. And those are very important. So a lot of people get deficiencies, they come in, they automatically think they gotta go buy cow mag. Well, you need to check out your soil pH. Um, you could do that by watering your plants, collecting a little bit out the bottom, checking that, you know, if it's way off, then you know your soil's down. Um, so that's that. The meters themselves, there's lots of different brands of them. Um, we have a lot of people come in, they get their little 995 job off the internet, that lasts about two weeks. <laughs> and you get what you pay for with meters um blue lab is our favorite brand in here um these tend to hold up and last they go to the reading really quick um some of my other ones that i really like are the hm this is more one of the lower costly meters um these seem to hold up um they are water resistant this one's actually waterproof the blue lab um our rep said they had one laying in the tank for months and it worked perfectly fine just laying in a tank um this guy here is not waterproof. We try not to sell these, but people buy them because they're the cheapest meter in here. And if you drop it in your tank, they're done, done quick. So I definitely recommend spending that little bit extra money, or if you just want to get a good meter, Blue Lab is awesome. All right. On um, the range of pH, the full range is zero to 14. So zero is pure acid, 14 is very alkaline. Both of those ranges are dangerous to you. You won't put your finger in there if it's that, like that. Um, um, most meters read between 2.5 and about 10.5. And this is your adjuster, pH up and down. Don't ever tick, stick your meter into one of these bottles by itself. They, it'll mess the meter up pretty quick. Um, a little bit about, about your meter itself. Um, all meters have this little glass ball at the bottom and I've had customers come in and say that your meter has leaked and there's liquid in there. Well, there's supposed to be liquid in there. That's actually potassium chloride and it's full of ions and I'm not a scientist so I don't want to get too far into this but pretty much ions come out, come through that glass, go into your liquid and then come back and then the meter compares it to this little side piece here which is called the junction. And then the internal computer of the meter will figure out what the value is, and that will give you your pH reading. Um, when you store your meter, that's a big question everybody always has. Some companies say store it in 7.0 solution. If you do that, those ions, even when your meter is off, those ions are constantly sending, coming in and going in and out. And once this runs out of ions, it's done. So if you store it in actual storage solution, this is potassium chloride. So if you put potassium chloride in your cap and your probe electrode is full of potassium chloride, the ions don't try to read while it's sitting there. So it'll last much longer using storage solution. So I recommend buying the actual storage solution. Um, you want to calibrate your pH meter, I'd say at least a couple times a month. Depends on what you got going on. If you got a lot going on, you should check it every day. But at least once a month, check and make sure your stuff's still on. Um, what we have here, to calibrate this thing, we have solutions. This is exactly 4.0 pH, and this is exactly 7.0 pH. When you calibrate any of your meters, um, some companies require you to use both, and then your computer will actually calculate a little chart in there to get you more of an accurate reading, supposedly. Um, but some of the companies I've dealt with that deal with, like even Blue Lab said, you know, if you're, a lot of stuff you're measuring is around six, 
then you really only have to calibrate to a seven because that's where you're going to be mostly at. I mean, if you think about it, nothing you give plants is ever at four, so you don't need to be accurate at that low of a range. Um, when you calibrate meters, it's pretty simple. Most meters have a button you push that says calibrate. Um, this little guy here actually has a screwdriver on the back and you got to turn a little knob to calibrate it. I kind of call that the old school way of doing things. So this one here, this is exactly 7.0. So when you want to go see if a meter needs to be calibrated, you're going to set it in here. You want to make sure you have enough water to color, cover the probe. And then you shake it around a little bit, make sure there's no air bubbles up inside the probe chamber. So right now we're at 6.9. So it's off by one tenth of a point, which is not that bad. But we're gonna go ahead and hit the calibrating button to show you what to do. And um, you pretty much hold that in. And then it'll go into calibration mode. You let go and just let it sit. And eventually it'll calibrate itself to the 7.0. And then it uses that as a reference for the rest of the month or whatnot. <clears throat> and it's almost done. Right. And then, by the way, the next episode we're going to be doing is going to be the nutrient strength meter. So check back with that. All right, so this went into calibration. It looks like it's done at 7.0, so you're good to go for a while. And I like to clean them off whenever I stick them in anything. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this in the cap. Potassium chloride will, like, turn into salt pretty much as it dries out. And on Blue Lab, when we got certified for Blue Lab, they said you don't have to have the thing swimming in the cap. You pretty much have to keep it moist. So humidity alone from the liquid will help keep it, the probe good. Um, if you let the probes dry totally out, a lot of people think that kills them totally. They can be brought back to life. A lot of mirrors we get in, they're dry when they come in. Just rehydrate them, soak them in the solution overnight, and it can kind of bring them back to life nicely, and it'll be like new. Um, but you don't want to let your meter sit around with nothing in the cap. If it's dry all the time, it's going to die eventually a lot prematurely than it would. Um, cleaning your meters. I had a customer bring in a meter the other day that wasn't working. It's a Hanna combo meter. So he just bought a new meter, but he left me his meter. So I figured I'd get it out today and show you what to do to clean them. This meter, it's looking a little rough under here. So when you clean your pH meter, all you really need to do is a soft tip toothbrush and some water and just give it a little scrub. Soft tip brush won't hurt the probe. Don't use like a hard tip and you know, go gentle with it. Make sure you get all your salts out of there. This particular meter is a combo meter, so it actually has the nutrient strength probe right here. Then you got your junction and you got your electrode. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one on. Um, I just scrubbed off the probe pretty nice, so go rinse that off a little bit. Right. So let's stick it in the seven and see what it says. It's very close. So this might have been just a simple cleaning. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the calibration. I'm gonna hold in the button. It's going in calibration mode. We're gonna put it in the seven. Right now it's saying use the four. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a quick rinse off here. So I'm not contaminating, contaminating my storage solution, I mean, uh, my calibration solution. All right, and he said it wouldn't go to four. So we're gonna see if that's true or not. And remember to do your little swirl around, make sure there's no bubbles down there. Um, the hand meters are pretty cool. They actually have a replaceable probe on them. So 
Blue Lab does not have a replaceable probe. A lot of times these probes cost close to the cost of the meter. So on this guy here, I'm probably going to end up doing a, a probe trade-off because it's not going to the floor like it's supposed to. So this one, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the probe one. I'm not gonna show you all that because it's pretty simple. They have a little tool here that pops the probe off. But other than that, um, pH is very important in your garden. Um, if you're using, like in nature, or a true living soil that's healthy, plants will excrete acids and actually control their own pH of the root zone. But indoor gardening, and especially in hydroponics, you don't have that happening like it should. So you wanna definitely make sure your pH is on and checked on a regular basis. Um, I hope this clears up some questions that everybody has about these pH meters. Um, try to take care of them, clean them. That's very important. And they can last you, you should get at least a year out of any meter. Um, we've had a customer that had one for six years and it still worked. That was the longest I've ever heard of a pH meter working. It's simply the ions will run out eventually and then it's done. And that's about it for the pH of this episode. Um, tune in next time, we're gonna talk about the PPM pen, which is also called TDS meters, EC meters, parts per million, nutrient strength meters, what I like to call them. But we're going to talk all about that. So if you have any questions, you can always comment. Leave a comment here down below. And like I said, don't forget to subscribe. And I'm Gary from P. Hydroponics in York Springs, PA. And we have a store in Maryland, all good garden supply. Check us out. Have a good day.